Hoodwink 2, Hood vs. Evil. Now just to let you know, I have seen the first movie and I gotta say, I love it! Sure it has bad songs and rancid animation up to the point that it's one of the worst computer animation that I've ever seen, but it really makes up for it with a really smart story, memorable characters, and great humor. I always consider Hoodwinked as the best animated film with the worst animation. It's possibly one of the best fairy tale spoofs along with Shrek. But now we have the long awaited sequel. Does this film manage to pull off the same wit and charm from the first? I I'm sorry, I, I just can't finish that sentence. This movie is absolute garbage. And here's why The Story. Remember that clever story in the first one where it mixed the classic Red Riding Hood story with a crime scene? Well, that's long dead. Now the movie is turned into a buddy cop story with some spy elements into it. Some say it's more of a spy film, but there are barely any cool gadgets in it. And it's bad. Really bad. They didn't add things to it to make it unique or more different than other buddy cop films. Well. They did, but it's just really stupid and it either makes absolutely no sense or isn't explained very well like the entire sisterhood thing or that perfect truffle that makes you invincible. I mean, these things just make it feel less like an actual Hoodwink sequel. Anyways, back to the quote unquote plot. It is very predictable and pretty much utilizes cliches to tell the story. The movie feels like it couldn't survive for five minutes without a cliché. But if there's anything that this film uses more than clichés, it's pop culture references and running gags that are not funny the first time. And trust me, they don't reference modern things that are popular right now. They reference films that are like more than 20 years old. And they're not even kids films. I'm talking about Scarface, Silence of the Lambs, Goodfellas, and more. Oh yeah, a kid will definitely get those references. You know what's the hardest thing for me to do about this? Believing that this pile of crap is actually written by the same guys who wrote the original. The Animation I will give it this. The animation on Hoodwink 2 is better than the original. But that's not saying much. The character design did earn a little bit of a polish this time, making it easier to look at the characters. But then there's the character animation. Where do I begin? Although that yes, the movements are smoother and more realistic than in the first film, but now it looks a lot like in Alpha and Omega where it looks something out of a GameCube or a PS2 game. But even with that, there are some things that the animator screwed up where I thought it would never happen in an animated film. First, there was the lip syncing. There are times in the film when their mouths would move, and it doesn't match to what the voice actors are actually saying. And this isn't a rare occurrence, oh no 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 no. This actually happens to about half the dialogue of this film. I mean, this mistake happens more than the film would say muffins! Another big mistake they did is the size of the characters would often change. A good example would be the giant. At one point, he would be so huge that his thumb is as big as red. And then a few moments later, he would be about twice the size of red. And then there's the background animation. Not only is it bland with literally just buildings and trees, but they also look really bad, like if they were made in just 10 minutes. Of course, there are exceptions, like the giant's building or the dark castle is okay, I guess. In all, it looks better than in the first film, but not as good as other animated films. The Characters it really does amaze me how they turned these memorable characters that we all loved into uninteresting characters that we don't care about. 
As a buddy cop film, they turn Red into the serious cop that wants to complete the mission, and Wolf into the more comical cop that just wants to live life. By the way, Hayden Panettiere is definitely no Anne Hathaway. For the spy angle, there's Granny, who plays the kidnapped spy who escaped the bad guy's lair. There's Nikki, who's the leader of the spy unit that helps Red and Wolf at his headquarters. And then there's Twitchy, who just isn't funny anymore, but still incomprehensible. Not because he talks too fast, he no longer does that, but because someone screwed up with his voice so badly by making his pitch go way too high. As for the rest of the original characters, they're barely in it at all. Kurt just appears for like two minutes max. Boingo is just there to make a Silence of the Lambs joke. And that singing goat is now just a bad running gag where he would get badly injured no matter where he goes. Great job, you pretty much ruined one of my favorite characters in the original. Good for you. As for the new characters, I just don't freaking care about them at all. There's Varushka that's more the jealous type towards Granny or something. There's the giant that's just there to make references to good fellas. There's the gayest ogre of all times at the beginning, and I really do mean that he's gay. And then there's Hansel and Gretel, the main villains of the movie. By the way, that's not really a spoiler, you learned that midway through the film. Anyways, they are just terrible villains. I think they said what was their motive, but all I understood was that they're just evil for just being evil. Plus, for the little German kids, they sound way too old for their age. I mean, I've never heard such a bad casting choice since Matthew Broderick as a little boy mouse. As you can see, all they did here was turn great characters into ones that are unfunny and generic, and then add in new unfunny generic characters. If you think Mars Needs Moms was bad, then you haven't seen Hoodwink 2 with its very predictable story that relies on pop culture references and cliches, lazy animation, and characters that we care for as much as used toilet paper. What I'm just so surprised about this film is the fact that it was released in theaters! In freaking theaters! I mean, by looking at it, this looks like the kind of film you would normally see in a straight-to-DVD sequel! And even some of those are actually better than this pile of crap! Therefore, I'm giving this film the first-ever Animat Seal of Garbage. A seal that it's honored to any animated film whose purpose is to just steal your money, waste about 90 minutes of your life, and make you just pissed off about it. Now if you excuse me, I gotta go prepare myself to fight against the HAE because eventually, they're gonna see this review and they'll try to hunt me down. He's a reputed smuggler, a juggler, a robber, a cobbler, a picker, a grinner, a restaurateur, and blogs about animated films. He should get a life. <laughs>